Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at video 9 and we're going to be talking about heterogeneous integration innovation. Now this is the part 1, we will have another video coming up soon, but today we're going to be focusing on interconnections uh, for heterogeneous integration. My name is Alonso, thanks for joining me today and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So, what is heterogeneous integration? Uh, it's basically the term is thrown out a lot and it can be a little bit confusing, but you know, when it comes down to it, it's just the integration of separate components into a higher level assembly with SIP. So you're supposed to be, or you know, it means that you're mixing different functionality, you're mixing different chips into one single chip and one single package. And as we can see over here in this picture in the top right, uh, we have different chips that have been manufactured separately in different fabs. And then we're just bringing all of those together and put them in, uh, putting them into the same package under the same, you know, substrate. They're all interconnected and they don't need to be connected to anything else through a PCB, for example. And they, they are usually able to perform a whole, a whole system's w worth of functionality, just the one chip. What this brings you is enhanced functionality and operation and uh, also a higher density of transistors, chips, or IOs. Uh, in this case, the, the chips are placed much closer together, so you get a higher density of chips, and you're also able to stack them vertically in a 3D architecture. That gives you a much, much higher density in terms of uh, um, footprint for both transistors, you know, chips, and also the IOs, which is what we'll focus on later. Uh, like I said, in a way, it works a little bit similar to a PCB, because you no longer need to connect the chips onto the PCB and have them all spread out. You can just, like, have all of the functionality that you would previously have in a board now you can have it in a chip and as you guys can see down here that also reduces the size making it much more efficient um, more dense and overall just better so uh, it's probably that we'll see that in the future a lot of the chips will try to especially for for small devices will try to shift a little bit more towards these heterogeneous integration chips uh, some of the applications for these uh, some of the main ones can be the automotive industry, uh, the medical field, or handheld devices, but you can see applications for HI on wearables, advanced computing, AI, aerospace, gaming, you name it. Anything that has advanced computing uh, could definitely use some heterogeneous integration chips. So we wanted to mention a little bit about the architecture. How, how do these chips come together? How are they laid out? Um, first of all, there's three main levels of architecture. There's chip level, package level, and PCB level. And then we have divided them into 2D architectures, which are, you know, devices placed side by side, and then they're interconnected on the package. And they have a couple subdivisions, so depending on the material that you use for your substrate, they can be 2DO for organics or 2DS for silicon. And then there's an enhanced version of these 2D chips, which are the 2.5D, and we've uh, talked about 2.5D chips before. And they usually use flip chips and uh, silicon interposer. And it's uh, what you guys can see up here in the top right. And then we move on to 3D architectures. And then in this case, the devices are stacked vertically and also interconnected vertically. And uh, you can have the, the, the dies stacked one on top of each other. And this is usually, for example, very common for the HBMs or high bandwidth memory stacks, as you guys can see over here on the right. And... Uh, can also be used for memory, but also for wafer on wafer uh, interconnections vertically if you're interconnecting other chips that are not necessarily memory. And then the other type of architecture for 3D would be the package on package, in which you get uh, already uh, manufactured package and just put it on top of something else and then connect it to the same um, substrate. And we'll see how that works coming up in the next slide where we're going to talk about. Uh, the different types of interconnections uh, for for different types of architecture. So the first type that we're going to look at is the die-to-die -die vertical interconnects, and these are usually used for 3D, so they'll connect, uh, you know, like the wafer stacks or the memory stacks. Uh, we have the unpackaged die-to-die, -die, and these will be lateral interconnects, and these are used for 2D or 2.5D applications. We have within package interconnects, and they will connect lateral nodes or or electrodes, and then we have uh, die to package, and we call we s these are would be your first level interconnect. And as we can see on the picture here on the top right, the first level interconnect will be your wire bonds or your flip chips, which are going to connect the die 
to the package substrate. And that will be your first level of interconnection. And then you have your second level interconnects, which are the package to board. And these will be basically your solder bumps that connect um, or, you know, your, or your lead frames in through hole components, but they will connect the package to the board in case of a PCB or things like that. And then finally, we have the package on package interconnects, which serve for the package on package architecture. You guessed it. And they have uh, some peripheral vertical interconnects. And as we can see over here on the right, this is the package on package architecture. And they have some vertical interconnects on the on the sides. And then, you know, you can have your chips be flip chips or um, whichever configuration you have. But they'll have these package on package interconnections. So in terms of the, uh, the, the importance for, for these interconnections, uh, why are we focusing on the interconnections? Why are they so important? Well, the main thing is that they enable new types of packages. If you don't have your inter if your interconnections cannot compete with your architectures, then your architecture is useless. You need to be able to connect your packages for them to work. So uh, just like a good uh, system of, of roads and highways is important for our country, then you need to have good interconnections for a good uh, chip, a good system. Uh, and they enable packages both horizontally and vertically. And we've seen that once again with 2.5 architectures and 3D architectures. They are enabled by these uh, horizontal and vertical interconnects. Without them, they would not exist. Uh, so they bring you an increased bandwidth. Thanks to having more interconnection density, you can uh, achieve a higher bandwidth. Uh, you can also have increased functionality because you can finally connect more chips in a smaller space so you can have more functionality in just one chip. And then this uh, IO increased density also comes accompanied by uh, an increase in the, uh, or sorry, a reduced in the package pitch. So uh, the the leads on a, on a package can now be very, very, very close together, as close as 30 microns. And, and that allows for more IOs for the packages, more interconnects between between the chips. And, and like I said, overall, it leads to higher bandwidth lower latency and just overall better performance. These interconnects use a wide range of materials. They usually start with gold or copper, but they can use silver, uh, they can use aluminum, you name it. And um, these, the reason they're the most important is because they are one of the keystones to the advancements of heterogeneous integration. Uh, they are probably the main limitation for the, the potential that HI has. And as soon as we bring our interconnections up to speed, and as soon as we, we get our interconnections to be as good as they can be, then uh, it'll they really will enable so many more types of packages, so many more efficient uh, packages. And it's it's kind of one of the things that needs to be uh, improved and looked at if, if uh, HI is going to keep moving forward and going to be uh, relevant in the future. So what are some of the technologies that we have to make these interconnections happen? We have... The, the the original one, the classic one, would be wire bonding. And it's still the most used technique for most packages. But it's just for very advanced packages, there is better better solutions. Like, for example, the solder ball, which they just connect directly the, the component of the substrate or the board. And these is what are basically what are used a little bit for flip chip. We can see a flip chip over here. And in comparison to the wire bond, it has much more IOs and also much shorter interconnections. So it'll have better performance and higher functionality. Um, so Flipchip was really something very interesting, which uses this kind of solder ball uh, as well as, you know, flipping the chip upside down. Um, again, reduced latency, and increased bandwidth. Uh, they're great. We also have some hybrid bonding, which is very interesting because it doesn't use any solder or or paste or anything. It just gets the pads together and through high temperatures it anneals for some time. It basically welds the two metals together and it doesn't use any kind of solder. So that's another technology available. And then there's uh, things like the silicon interposer and the through silicon vias which we've talked a lot in previous videos as well. And they allowed for uh, vertical and horizontal interconnection and these are the key components to 2.5D and 3D architectures. Um, they can connect the chips horizontally and then uh, sometimes we also have the active uh, interposer which can you know have some functionality of its own 
And something similar that Intel has been looking into in order to avoid the full silicon layer would be the bridges. Uh, they have their EMIB uh, D technology, I think it's called, and they will have basically a little pocket of a little pocket of uh, silicon and like a maybe an organic interposer, or an, sorry, an organic uh, substrate, and they will just make the connection needed in that little area instead of having uh, the full layer be be silicon, like in the in case of the interposer. So uh, one of the other things we wanted to look at is the the security in terms of the in the interconnections. Uh, like we've mentioned, interconnections are one of the key key components of HI packages, so they might be the target for hardware attacks. So if, you, uh, if you're a malicious um, a fab or, or a rogue employee trying to attack, um, you know, through hardware a package, it's likely that the interconnections are the target. And once again, because they're so important, uh, they have so many important information that goes through them that if, if intercepted could be very dangerous, could be a very high security threat. Uh, they're also very hard to ins inspect and validate, so it's hard to tell if they've been tampered with. And also, if someone gets the the interconnection layout, they might as well they they might be able to reverse engineer uh, the actual layout for the chips and the actual layout for the for the whole package. And it could be a way to try to steal intellectual property. So the interconnections are very important. It's very important to keep them secure. Now, some of these attacks can come from high knowledge or with uh, employees without knowledge, and and they can obviously perform different types of attacks, but they can cause some security or reliability threats. Um, and and you know the only thing we can try to do right now is there's some failure analysis methods that allow to insect packages, and we can try to detect whether the package has been tampered with uh, or modified thanks to these inspection methods. But again. Uh, like I said, interconnections can be very hard to inspect and validate. So what are some of the attacks that can be made onto the interposer? Uh, the most uh, dangerous we can think of would be a change in the lithography mask. Uh, if someone has the knowledge to change this, they could be able to change the layout of the package or the layout of the interconnections and and potentially cause a lot of a lot of security threats. Uh, they can also try to add or remove components or maybe sometimes, uh, um, someone with not as much knowledge can try to just um, change the recipe for for the for the interconnections for the materials or something, and that can lead to also different threats. So most of the threats can be uh, divided into denial of service, where they just make chips that don't work. Or, you know, they attack your chip so it doesn't work. They can cause reliability issues. So maybe they can be thermal instability, or they can cause lag. And then in the case of adding trojans or you know changing lithography mass, they can potentially try to steal uh, some data if they get the information to somewhere it wasn't supposed to be. And there can be some data leakage or IP piracy, and uh, that can be a very high security threat and something we definitely want to avoid. So uh, security for the interconnections is definitely something that we should be aware of and look up, uh, look out for as we develop more HI technology. So that's it for this first video. Uh, there will be another video coming up soon. I hope you guys are tuned in for that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. You found it interesting and entertaining. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.